Um, so today I've been um, playing around with uh, Grasshopper and on uh, Rhino. Grasshopper is essentially a, um, a plugin for uh, Rhinoceros, which is quite a powerful um, 3D drawing program. And Rhino works potent um, really well with Archicad, uh, which is the main drafting software that my office uses. So I've been trying to get to grips with um, Grasshopper at the moment, which is algorithmic um, modeling for Rhinoceros. Um, Rhinoceros on its own is a fantastic um, 3D modeling tool. And um, Grasshopper essentially allows you to use formulas and code certain ways of modeling um, in a very visual way. Um, so one of the one of the use cases I've found for this is um, working out uh, dynamically uh, as a rough estimate what you should use for a joist span table. Um, one of the most amazing things with Grasshopper is the ability to use a, um, a plugin called Galapagos. Um, and what this essentially does is it allows you to um, set parameters and then the program evolves a solution that best fits um, and tries to get you the best outcome um, based on the sort of the parameters you give it and genome the genome and the uh, the fitness factor so you dictate what makes a gene successful and how it can manipulate it and it'll go forth and try and work out the fittest way of doing it for you um, so what I was thinking was you could have a joist span table and you could give it all the um, the depth, the width, the spans available um, and try and work out the way to get the least amount of wastage on site, the most um, economic way of reducing the amount of timber required on site, um, which you could also extrapolate to not only um, sustainability related um, questions, but also um, pricing of timber. So here we have um, the, the model as it stands at the moment in Rhino. So this is a floor plate which I've drawn, as a, which Grasshopper has actually drawn as a rectangle, and one specific um, layout of joists for a floor that would allow it to um, span that gap for, for a floor. Now obviously that would be different for roofs and it's, it's different for different standards of timber as well, so you've got um, C24s, but what I've used in mine is C16s at the moment, so that's functionality you could obviously add. So if you go to Grasshopper here, I'm not sure it's somewhere. Right, so it's over here. Essentially what you've got is, um, looks like a tangled mess of inputs and outputs, but it's actually performing quite a simple um, uh, formula, but just in, in different parts. So I'll go through the different bits, bits that I've put in and then we'll run Galapagos to see how it works. Um, so this is the, um, the set of tables that it's allowed to use. Um, and these are straight from an Excel uh, formula, which I basically just um, hang on, let me just adjust this window a second. Let's see what's going on. So these three are the three different types of timber. So um, based on um, floor loadings here, so you've got um, sort of minimum usage floor zone of 0 0.25 via GK, um, 0 0.5 and 1.25, so this would be your heaviest duty um, floor construction. So you can go in and you could change to a different type of floor type. Um, and essentially what you've got here um, is a list of numbers um, just written in plain text. So the first number is the spacing of the timbers, and you've got the breadth. Um, the depth 
and the maximum span usage. Um, so that just gives you in a clear um, sort of pattern all the different combinations that are available. Um, the next step um, splits the list into the different numbers and it basically creates an array of those using commas so it splits them out, turns them into a number and then it um, it basically culls out the ones that aren't applicable so all of the combinations that wouldn't work um, that, that fall on, uh, over the maximum span um, so this is the main parameter for the program. You've got um, the width of the span and also the extent of the floor plate. So what this does is basically increases, and decreases the span width. And you've also got an extent here. So that gives you the exact number of timbers as it goes along. Um, this feeds into here. So you've got a, a Boolean logic which is then culled, so you, you're left with just the options that would work in that situation. Um, this gives you the number of solutions that are available to solve your problem, um, and that's just a quick readout of the span required. Um, then what this does um, is it, it picks a solution based on this slider. So it's a slider that ranges from 0 to 1,000, just because I know that there's not going to be any more than 1,000 options. Um, but what it does is it rounds the number, it remaps it to the number of solutions that you have, and then as it goes up and down, it picks from that whole list of available solutions. So essentially you've got a, a remapping, a rounding, um, and then a replacement to pick which branch of the tree to go to. Um, and then you've got some simple calculations. So this gives you an output of all the um, specifications of the timber chosen in that one solution. So you've got the centers, so that's the spacing, 600 millimeters, um, breadth, which is the width of it, the depth, which is the structural depth up and down. You've got the maximum span there, and the volume of timber which is given in meters cubed, just for simplicity's sake. So you just take um, you, you just take the um, the number of timbers and the dimensions of one, and just times the two together, and then I've converted it from millimeters squared into meters cubed, just because everything else is in millimeters here. Um, this is a small section which works out the centering. So it takes the entire length, works out the difference and then halves it to push them along um, basically and work out and it rounds down so um, you're going to get um, one less timber than you need which is correct for the space and is here. Um, and then right at the end that generates the geometry so um, you've got your pattern, you offset it and then you uh, you essentially just array it along that pattern. So essentially, you've, you've got an, um, you've just got a parameter for the problem at hand, the solutions you could pick, and what you're me what I'm going to measure is the um, the volume of the timber by the end. So the total volume of the timber here um, ends up being the Galapagos measure of fitness. So you have to drag um, this back to whatever you're, whatever you're going to measure for the, for the level um, um, of how you explain how well this is doing. And the genome is um, dictated by this slider here, so that's what it can choose from in order to get the best answer. So, <clears throat> so if we set this problem up for it and see how it gets on we can see what the most efficient way of spanning um, 3.2 meters is. So if you double click this one, um, I'm going to minimize the fitness because I want um, that volume to be as small as possible for the problem at hand. Um, get it to render 
most solutions and give it a go. So it's going to go through a number of different solutions and it's going to get hopefully more productive as it goes up and it'll get it'll basically zone in on um, an efficient area and it'll probably flatten out when it works out exactly how it's um, how it's best to um, cut down on timber. So here we go, it's going to do I think about 50 generations as you can see the the fitness is going up and as it as it gets closer you can see that the these are the, the actual outputs for that um, that volume of timber that's used to span the floor so in the worst case um, in the worst case solutions it's come out at 0.4 of a meter cubed of timber but in the best it's 0.25 so that's a pretty good saving on site I mean there's obviously other things to take into account like um, your, your target um, floor depth and other bits and pieces but just as a sort of rough idea very helpful to have so I'm going to go ahead and stop this now I think it's found a relatively good solution here so I'm going to stop the solver and the good thing is you can actually reinstate um, multiple different versions of it so this might be the most efficient way it's found so far um, so the output of this would be a 600 millimeter centers um, timber uh, 38 mil breadth um, 220 mil depth which gives you a maximum span of 3.54 which is pretty close to our target span which is 3.2 so it's just over that um, giving you 0 0.256. The next, um, the next most efficient way to do it um, is with another 600 centers solution, slightly wider timbers and slightly less deep, giving you a maximum span of 3.3, so that still works, and the meters cubed in volume in timber, which is uh, 0 0.26. So yeah, it's a fantastic tool. Uh, the interesting thing is that you can actually um, you can weight um, what's important to you. So if I wanted to uh, take into account the depth as well as the um, the volume, you could divide one by the other and give one a specific weighting um, in terms of importance. Uh, one can actually um, discount the other. Yeah, pretty cool, pretty handy little script. I think the main thing is to get all of this information, all this data here. Um, and at some stage I'd like to be able to compare um, the cost in C16 timbers versus C24s, which are a lot more expensive, but can obviously hold a lot more. Um, so yeah, and all that's left to do is to um, is to bake this into the model, or you could actually use the um, the, the Archicad um, plugin to turn these into morphs or even um, columns. I've yet to do that, so yeah, pretty handy little script, pretty handy little um, program. Um, yeah, hope you enjoy.